Hello everyone and welcome to another P-Series tutorial. Today I want to show you how to create this image in Photoshop using a technique called digital blending. Now there is a little bit more than just blending uh, two images in this photo. I did create a beam of light, a tilt shift effect that you can see the blur, uh, the foreground, the background, as well as playing with the color and the saturation of the image. So this photo was taken in Bali at the Jetalui UNESCO rice field terrace. We were walking along the ridge here and got caught in the rain so we hid in that little shack that you see in the middle of this photo and whenever the rain stopped we just walked all the way up the hill and I was able to stop here and take a few pictures of this scene. So this is one of the secret when you want to shoot for HDR or um, digital blending, you need to sh take picture with a purpose. So what I mean by that is if you take a look at this uh, image here that I renamed dark, I shot mainly for the sky. I didn't care much about the scene else than the clouds in this one. And the other one that says light is the other way around. I sh pretty much like take the picture for the land and the whole scene and I didn't care much about the sky because I knew that I would come back and blend these two together to give us a nice even image. So digital blending can be done in many ways. You could work with luminosity mask. Uh, there is panels you can get on the internet that will help you do that or you can create your own with the alpha channels. You can use a mask and a brush and do it all yourself or you can use a gradient tool, which is what we're going to do today. Uh, we're going to use the gradient tool and uh, with a mask. And the reason for that is the horizon line is fairly steady, it's fairly even, and there's no kind of trees or anything in the way that would require a very fine selection. So let's get started on the blending. So we're going to choose the dark layer. We will come here to create a mask and hold the Alt Option key to create a dark mask. So it just hit everything. We will come around and choose the gradient tool and we will choose a white foreground. We will start creating a line somewhere in the middle of the clouds there straight to a shack. And here it is, the cloud just reappeared. So let's quickly take a look at the before and the after. So as you can see, it blends very nicely. So if you go take a look at our mask, everything which is white is what the actual mask let see through. So we can see the clouds through the white parts and the dark is what's hidden. And what's gray, it's what's uh, getting showed gradually from uh, the white to the black part. So now that we have that blending done, we will start working on the coloring of the image. So what I like to do is to get the vibrance adjustment. When I work with like pictures that are stormy and stuff like that, I like to desaturate my picture and then just put the saturation back to where I want afterwards, put some color to where I want afterwards. So now I desaturate it to, let's see, 10, uh, minus 10 and the vibrance minus 20. So that give us a pretty flat image. So we're going to put some more pop into a sky here. So what we're going to do here is create a new layer with the gradient tool. We're going to create the take the black foreground. Oops, sorry, didn't mean to click on this. And then we're going to go over the picture, so above it, and we're going to draw a line straight to our shack again. And then you'll see it will be very dark in the top, but there's a nice gradient uh, that flows very smooth towards your shack. So we're going to change the blending mode to soft light. As soon as we do that, the highlights are coming back in the sky. It's more natural. We might need to just bring down the opacity to maybe 80, 85%. And that looks pretty good. So the before and the after. So we brought back some life into our cloud. Um, what I like to do as well when I work with a stormy picture is to add a blue tint to it. So what we're going to do here is we're going to add a new layer. We're going to change our color, choose a dark blue, and I like to play with dark color when I go with uh, stormy weather. 
So we're gonna right click here to choose the paint bucket from the gradient tool and we're gonna create a blue picture. Now I will go and change the blending. I find overly soft light and hard light are the three best blending mode but mainly soft light and overlay the one that I play the most with. So let's try with soft light. It always looked too much so I start from zero and I build my way up to where I think it should be. So if I look around I want to create something super moody, super dark. So maybe around 48% looks good. I don't want too much blue in the sky so what I'm going to do here is create a layer mask, a white layer mask. I'm going to choose a black foreground and I'm going to choose my brush by pressing B. I will create, um, let's say, uh, 25 at 50% opacity, 25% uh, soft, and I will hide this blueness in the sky a little bit. Maybe I'll do another passage here, just like that. So before and after, it really kind of like darken the image and give you more like a darker feel. Um, what I'm going to do as well is I will maybe put a little bit more uh, green back into this picture. Um, I'll do the same thing. I'll create a new layer. I'll go with the green color and uh, a little vibrant. Let's go something dark again. Maybe about right here with the bucket. I'm going to do the same thing. This time let's try overlay. And we're going to go past it at zero and build a way up till we find like that nice color we feel that should be good. Like somewhere around here, 17%. And then we're going to create a mask again. And with a brush, with a black brush, we're going to go 100% opacity because I don't want green in the sky. I will totally take this out. And I'll take my opacity maybe around 40%. And this that nice like earthy kind of like red tint here I want to bring back that nice red and the water I'll take the green out of it so I'll take the green out of this area quite a bit and then after that I'll create a new layer whoop, and do the same process find a red which look very earthy so maybe somewhere in there actually looks very good again with the bucket same story instead what I'll do here is I'll create a black layer mask by holding alt shift uh, sorry, Alt Option key, and then I will use a white brush this time just to um, brush this back in. Now, I did not change the opacity of this layer, so it will look a little too much. Just bear in mind here, we're going to click on this and we will go and bring that to zero, do the same process, and then bring it back up to where we think it's okay. We should be about there. Maybe we'll add a little bit more here. There we go. Now we could add a little bit, maybe add a little bit of uh, contrast to this. So what we can do is a little curve level, then just maybe a little contrast like this will be great. A little strong. Let's go to zero somewhere in the middle. Seventy percent sounds good. I'm happy with all the colors now. We're gonna regroup all of these by having the first one selected and clicking shift on the last one and then command J to group them and we're gonna call this color and now if we look at it we have the before and the after look it is more uh, dark it's a little bit more contrasty and stormy but we kept color that we want to keep and we boost some of the color so I'm happy with that now let's work on that beam of light I was talking about so how I do that is I'll create three layers. I will rename the bottom layer L for large, the one in the middle M for medium, and the top one S for small. So I will choose the L, so the large one, the polygon lasso, and I will create a selection. So let's start from the corner here and create a fairly large selection around the shack, somewhere around like this. Let's close this. We will right click inside the selection, press feather, 100 pixel. Let's do it twice because it is our large selection, so it's 200 pixel feathered. Right click, we will go to fill, fill with white contents, and the mode will be lighten. And now here it is. We have this big white 
spec that just arrived so we can press command D just to look at it see how it's nice and feathered so we're gonna bring this opacity down to maybe just 35 degrees to give us something to work with now we're gonna do the same thing with the medium layer but build it inside the large layer so the idea there is we're building a few layers of beam of light that will blend together nicely and will feather a little bit more natural. I will only feather a hundred pixel that one and same thing we're going to fill with white. Deselect, bring that down to maybe 40% just as a reference point and now for the uh, small one I want a direct beam of light, a very small one straight on the shack because that is the actual beam of light that will be concentrating on the shack so we're going to feather that to 100 and then we will go and do the same thing with the fill the white okay now we get this we're going to deselect and the whole idea now is to make it look natural so we will bring down the opacity so what i want to do here is my large speck of light should be just a spill of light just a tiny bit so my medium should be a tiny bit stronger and just blend it a little bit towards my middle one, my small one, which will be that one that's really going to highlight the whole shack. So uh, maybe a little too strong, maybe down there, and the large maybe around 8 or something like that. Here we go. Now we have a nice beam of light that comes through. It still look unnatural because it's white and there's no shadows in there, so we're going to work on that. We're going to regroup this. We can land that light and we're going to create a white layer mask. We're going to choose a brush with a black brush, the opacity down to maybe 20%, and we will zoom in a little bit. So the whole idea, what we're going to try to do here is create some shadows on the, to the shack and make sure that this palm tree here is not affected too much by that speck of light because technically the light is shining in front of that palm tree so we want to make sure that there's not too much light kind of like shining on it it will create a more three-dimensional uh, feel to our picture if we do that so just with the brush again I'm going a little rough here so you can take your time while you do that at home but I'm gonna take it all out of there and then once that's done let's do very soft at zero put it back to white and we're just going to click a few times around the tree to make it look a little bit more natural that blends a little bit better in there instead of having like a hard light like this so now that this is pretty much looking okay I'm going to put it back to black hardness back to maybe 20 30 percent and then we're going to start creating shadows on the building that little shack here so just think about where the light is falling onto the shack where the shadows should be should be kind of like under the roof and should be any light hitting there you can also create a little bit of shadows onto the ground too because the shack itself will create uh, shadows from the beam of light which is coming in a 45 degree angle right so just make that kind of as natural as you can so here we go we're going to zoom out so you look a little bit more natural now it is very strong still so we're going to take the whole folder and maybe change the opacity to something we feel it's a little bit more natural to maybe around 75 percent now it's a very white light so what we can do is uh, add some color to it so we can do it the same way we did by creating a new layer now we're going to clip this layer to the folder that we just created the group that says light so the idea is you hold the Alt, uh, the option alt key and then you have this little arrow when you press on it it clips to this so whatever we do with this layer will be only affecting this group so we can choose a yellow light something orangey yellow that will look more like the sun press ok with the paint bucket just go through and you'll have the crazy looking thing so we'll just change opacity to something that look a little bit more natural do something like that okay now I am happy with this so let's work on our tilt shift effect um, before we do that just 
change it down there a little bit. Here we go. So we're going to create a master copy of all the layers we have visible by holding common, command, option, shift, and E. And then it will create its own merge all the visible copies. The reason why we are why we are doing that is we will uh, create a smart object afterwards, and then we're gonna apply the blur filter onto that copy. So I will press pause and come back whenever it's done. Okay, now to create a smart object, all you have to do is to right click on that layer convert to smart object and it'll take a few seconds alright so now you can tell this is a smart object by uh, just hovering on top or having this little icon in the bottom right of your image here so we're gonna go to filter blur gallery tilt shift so you take this circle, drag it over your shack, then rotate this line to make it work with your horizon and the hill. Now we're going to add some blur by moving this little white slider in the middle there, maybe somewhere around 30. And then we're going to move this line. So whatever it's in between these two lines is going to be gradual and whatever it's past this dotted line will be blurred 100%. So you want to make it so it's going to somewhat working like that. And perhaps right to the bottom of the hill and somewhere in there. So if you're happy, you press OK and let Photoshop do its thing and you can always come back afterwards because it is a smart object. So here it is, you have your blur and tilt shift effect so if you want to go back to it you go to your blur gallery here and double click on it and it'll bring you straight back to your tilt shift effect. You can do changes and press OK or you can press cancel and get out of there. So that's the advantage of the smart object. Okay, so I guess all we got to do here is perhaps a little vignette to draw the uh, viewer attention to the center, to the shack. So the way I do that is I take the elliptical marquee tool and uh, draw a circle somewhere in the middle of your image. Right click, feather. Uh, we're going to feather that to maybe 200 pixel. So we're going to do that twice. And um, the way I do my um, vignette is with the um, level adjustment. So I will press on this. And then there's different ways to do those. So you can do them with uh, curves and what different air, different um, tools. But this is how I do mine. So you need to invert it. You can go to your mask, press invert, and see, just invert it there. And you can go back to your level and take the middle slider and slide it to the right and you will be able to darken your image. So here we go, we get our vignette. So that's our before and after. See how our eyes drawn straight to that middle, to the light that shine onto that little shack. So here it is, uh, that is the final image. Let's take a look how far we are from our original final image that we looked at. See, totally different. That one is desaturated a little bit more. We did add up a little bit more color to this one, so a little bit more vibrant. So really from one time to the other, you do that, you can change so much thing. Um, you can really tailor that to your liking. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Feel free to leave me comments, or if you want to learn something different, let me know, and I'll make sure to create new tutorials. And thank you very much for watching.